Hello students, uh, in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of uh, potassium sparing diuretics. Now before discussing pharmacology of uh, potassium sparing diuretics, let us uh, quickly revise function of uh, kidneys and role of diuretics. Now uh, look at this diagram, uh, this diagram shows a uh, structure of nephron and uh, these are the uh, peritubular capillaries and these peritubular capillaries are also termed as vasa recta. Now the most important function of kidneys is to filter and purify blood and remove waste toxic products of the body in the form of urine. Now structural and functional unit of kidney is the nephron. Now each kidney consists of around 1 million nef nephrons and the main function of kidney is to produce urine. Now there are three main steps in the formation of urine namely the glomerular filtration then selective reabsorption and secretion. Now blood in the glomerulus is filtered and the filtrate passes into the tubule of nephron. Now around 180 liters of filtrate is produced daily by both the kidneys. Now this filtrate uh, consists of more than 90 percent water. Uh, then waste toxic products like urea, uric acid, creatinine along with the useful substances like glucose, amino acids, uh, vitamins, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium etc. Now all these essential substances uh, that are required along with the water is reabsorbed. Uh, it is reabsorbed from the uh, lumen into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells all the required substances they move to the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and thus all these required substances they reach the blood circulation. Now thus around 99% of the filtrate uh, is returned to the blood circulation and this reabsorption of filtrate maintains the blood volume and uh, the pH of blood. Now reabsorption of water primarily depends on the reabsorption of sodium. Now water is reabsorbed isoosmotically that is for every molecule of sodium that is reabsorbed is accompanied by reabsorption of molecule of water and thus when the sodium is reabsorbed uh, the water follows. Uh, that means water follows higher sodium concentration. Now very important to remember that uh, out of 180 liter of filtrate only 1 to 1.5 liter of urine is produced. That means uh, rest uh, of the filtrate that is 99 percent of the filtrate is reabsorbed um, in this uh, renal tubule. At uh, different sites like uh, the proximal convoluted tubule here uh, 65 to 70 percent of sodium and water is uh, uh, reabsorbed. Uh, then this is the descending loop of Henle here 15 percent of uh, water is reabsorbed. Uh, this is the ascending limb of uh, loop of Henle here around 25 percent of uh, sodium is reabsorbed. Now this is the early distal tubule here uh, around 5 percent of sodium and 8 percent of uh, uh, the content uh, water content of the filtrate is uh, reabsorbed. Uh, now this is the late uh, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct here around 3 percent of uh, uh, sodium is absorbed and apart from this water is also absorbed. Now absorption of uh, water is tightly regulated by antidiuretic hormone in the collecting duct whereas absorption reabsorption of sodium is regulated by the aldosterone. So this is how Mm, at different sites uh, water and uh, sodium is reabsorbed from the renal tubule into the renal uh, into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells sodium along with the water moves into the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and from here uh, sodium as well as water they reach the blood circulation and this is how the blood volume and the pH of blood is maintained. Now uh, diuretics are the agents that uh, act upon kidney uh, and they increase the volume of urine thereby reducing the volume of blood. Now uh, what di uh, diuretics uh, do is this that di diuretics decrease uh, the reabsorption of uh, sodium 
as well as the reabsorption of water from the lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Thus, diuretics are the agents that uh, cause net loss of sodium and water in the urine. Now, since these diuretics, they increase the volume of urine, they reduce the volume of blood, they are primarily useful in the management of edema and hypertension. Uh, now, let's uh, talk about uh, potassium sparing diuretics. Now, as we all know, diuretics are the agents that act on kidneys and cause net loss of sodium and water in urine. Now, potassium sparing diuretics also cause loss of sodium and water in urine. That is, they increase the volume of urine, but preserve potassium. That means they prevent the loss of potassium in urine. Now, these are of two types. Uh, the first class is the aldosterone antagonist. Uh, examples are spironolactone, then aplirinone. Second class is of uh, inhibitors of renal epithelial sodium channels. For example, triamterene and amyloroid. Now, very important uh, to understand that these agents, unlike other diuretics, induce diuresis without causing loss of potassium in the urine and their major site of action is the late distal convoluted tubule and cells of collecting duct. Uh, now let's understand mechanism of action of uh, potassium sparing uh, diuretics. Uh, site of action of these drugs is a late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Look at this diagram. This diagram shows the lumen uh, the filtrate is present here. This is the luminal epithelial cell of uh, distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Now, this is a section of peritubular capillary or vasa recta showing the blood. Now, this epithelial cell has two surfaces. One is the apical surface facing the lumen and the other is the basolateral surface facing, facing the peritubular capillary, capillary. Now, first category of potassium sparing diuretic is the aldosterone antagonist that is the spironolactone. This is the most important diuretic. Now, spironolactone is a steroid and chemically it is related to mineralocorticoid that is aldosterone. Now, this aldosterone uh, shown here in the uh, red color and represented as capital A. It, uh, uh, this aldosterone regulates the reabsorption of sodium in the distal convoluted tubule and in the collecting duct. Now, fall in the level of uh, sodium in the blood, rise in the level of potassium in the blood and angiotensin 2 stimulates release of uh, the steroidal hormone that is the aldosterone. Now, aldosterone then further moves from the blood, reaches the cell of a distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Now, this aldosterone, it combines with the mineralocorticoid receptor shown here in the green color as MR. So, aldosterone, it combines with the, uh, with the, mineralocortico, uh, with the mineralocorticoid receptor and induces synthesis of uh, aldosterone-induced proteins. Uh, namely the sodium potassium ATPase pump and the renal epithelial sodium uh, channels. These are the sodium channels. So aldosterone induced proteins are uh, the sodium potassium ATPase and renal epithelial sodium channels. Now further the aldosterone induces reabsorption of sodium from the filtrate into the epithelial cell and further the sodium potassium ATPase pump mediates the transportation of reabsorbed sodium into the blood that is in, in the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta. Now sodium is reabsorbed in the blood uh, in exchange of potassium. So potassium is secreted uh, in the filtrate. Potassium is uh, released in the filtrate or in the urine. Now, aldosterone also stimulates functioning of uh, sodium hydrogen ATPase and hence sodium is reabsorbed in exchange of hydrogen. So, the hydrogen is also secreted in the filtrate or the urine. Thus, potassium and hydrogen are secreted in the filtrate due to the reabsorption of sodium. Now, apart from aldosterone, uh, it is the antidiuretic hormone that regulates the reabsorption of water. Now, this antidiuretic hormone, it inserts aquaporine channels or water channels in the collecting duct and the water is reabsorbed.
Uh, water is reabsorbed from the filtrate into the blood, provided that the sodium is reabsorbed. So, reabsorption of uh, water is tightly regulated by um, antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone. So, this is the uh, general physiology. Uh, the general functioning of uh, aldosterone and the antidiuretic hormone. Now, after understanding the role of aldosterone in the reabsorption of sodium and antidiuretic hormone in the reabsorption of uh, water, uh, let's understand the mechanism of action of uh, aldosterone antagonist that is a spironolactone. Mm -hmm. Now, spironolactone uh, itself binds to the mineralocorticoid receptor. That means spironolactone inhibits the binding of aldosterone to the mineralocorticoid receptor. It itself binds to the mineralocorticoid receptor and inhibits the formation of aldosterone induced proteins. So, on one hand, spironolactone reduces synthesis of sodium channels and the sodium is not reabsorbed from the filtrate into the epithelial cell. On the other hand, it also causes reduced synthesis of sodium potassium ATPase pump. Thus, uh, if the sodium is reabsorbed, if little sodium is reabsorbed, that is not transported to the blood. So, this sodium, it remains within the filtrate and it passes into the urine. Now, apart from this, uh, since the sodium is not reabsorbed, uh, spironolactone prevents secretion of potassium ions. It uh, prevents uh, the loss of potassium in the urine. It spares the potassium. Now, apart from this, uh, spironolactone also inhibits uh, aldosterone mediated ATP synthesis and thus it reduces the functioning of uh, sodium hydrogen ATPase. This again inhibits reabsorption of sodium and it also prevents excretion of uh, hydrogen ions in the filtrate. So, hydrogen ions are not secreted. Now, since hydrogen ions are not secreted, uh, this uh, luminal bicarbonate or the bicarbonate ions present in the filtrate, they are excreted in the urine and therefore the urine becomes alkaline. So, uh, spironolactone makes the urine alkaline and it further causes metabolic acidosis. Now, since this uh, sodium is not reabsorbed, water is also not reabsorbed. As the reabsorption of water depends upon uh, antidiuretic hormone as well as on the aldosterone. Now, water can be reabsorbed only in the presence of reabsorption of sodium. So, spironolactone inhibits uh, the reabsorption of sodium. Uh, it inhibits reabsorption of water and it also prevents uh, secretion of uh, or loss of potassium uh, in the filtrate. It also prevents loss of uh, hydrogen ions in the filtrate. Now, let us uh, talk about the mechanism of action of second class of potassium sparing diuretics namely inhibitors of uh, renal epithelial sodium channels for example, amyloroid. Now, amyloroid blocks the sodium channels inhibiting reabsorption of sodium and thereby inhibiting the secretion or excretion of uh, potassium in the urine. Uh, now, let us uh, uh, quickly revise the mechanism of action of uh, spironolactone. Uh, spironolactone is a competitive aldosterone receptor antagonist. It combines with the mineralocorticoid receptors and inhibits formation of uh, aldosterone induced proteins. Uh, this inhibits synthesis and functioning of uh, renal epithelial sodium channels, inhibits functioning and synthesis of sodium potassium ATPase and also reduces functioning of sodium hydrogen ATPase due to reduced ATP synthesis. Thus, uh, spironolactone inhibits sodium reabsorption and prevents secretion of uh, potassium and hydrogen in the filtrate. Water reabsorption is also uh, reduced. Now, uh, let us talk about the uses of uh, spironolactone. Spironolactone is a, a, a mild diuretic and uh, it is used as an add-on diuretic along with other diuretics. Uh, it is not a potent diuretic uh, because uh, nearly 90% of the glomerular filtrate is, also, is already reabsorbed before the filtrate reaches the late distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct.
Now, potassium sparing diuretics are mainly used as an adjuvant or as an additional diuretic along with the thiazides and loop diuretics as it prevents the loss of uh, potassium in the urine. Now, other uses of uh, spironolactone. Spironolactone is uh, very useful in cirrhotic and nephrotic edema in which uh, aldosterone levels are generally very high. In hypertension, spironolactone is used as an adjuvant to thiazides uh, since it prevents uh, the loss of uh, potassium in the urine. Uh, it's uh, useful in hypertension associated with renal fibrosis and left ventricular hypertrophy as it is an aldosterone antagonist. Now again, since uh, spironolactone is an aldosterone antagonist, it is useful in congestive heart failure. It is used as an adjuvant to conventional therapy as it can retard disease progression and reduce mortality in moderate to severe congestive heart failure. Now let's uh, uh, quickly uh, see to the drug interactions of uh, spironolactone. Now uh, uh, since uh, the spironolactone is a potassium sparing agent, uh, it prevents a loss of potassium. Dangerous hyperkalemia can be caused if it is used along with potassium supplements, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. Now, apart from this, uh, aspirin inhibits tubular secretion of canrinone. Now, canrinone is an active metabolite of uh, spironolactone and it is responsible for about uh, half to two third of the action of spironolactone. So, aspirin inhibits tubular secretion of uh, canrinone and therefore aspirin reduces the uh, action of spironolactone. Spironolactone also increases plasma digoxin concentration. Uh, now, uh, the adverse effects of uh, spironolactone. Spironolactone can cause ataxia, drowsiness, mental confusion, epigastric distress and loose motions. Now, spironolactone can also cause hormonal disturbances. Now, uh, important to remember that uh, spironolactone decreases uh, production of testosterone and it can also increase peripheral conversion of uh, testosterone to astradiol and therefore it can cause hormonal disturbances like uh, gynecomastia, uh, erectile dysfunction and loss of libido in men and uh, breast tenderness men mens menstrual abnormalities in women and uh, since spironolactone causes a uh, retention of potassium the most serious adverse effect is the hyperkalemia uh, as discussed earlier it can cause uh, metabolic acidosis and it is contraindicated in peptic ulcer another aldosterone antagonist is the uh, aplirinone uh, now, aplirinone is a more selective aldosterone antagonist and it shows reduced uh, potential to cause hormonal disturbances. Now, the next category of uh, potassium sparing diuretics as uh, we have already discussed are inhibitors of renal epithelial sodium channels for example, triamterene and amyloroid. Now, as discussed earlier, uh, these drugs block renal epithelial sodium channels inhibiting reabsorption of sodium and inhibition of the reabsorption of sodium reduces negative transepithelial potential difference of lumen inhibiting secretion of potassium and hydrogen and uh, these drugs are used as uh, adjuvants or uh, add-on therapy with thiazides or loop diuretics since they inhibit uh, secretion of potassium and uh, uh, the most important adverse effect is the hyperkalemia as they cause retention of potassium. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, potassium sparing diuretics. Please note that the information provided in this video is meant exclusively for students from their examination point of view and uh, kindly consult physician for the clinical use of potassium sparing diuretics. Now, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.